Hello and welcome. I'm James Murphy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I used Python and the YouTube Data API to update all of my video descriptions. Well, enough of my viewers have asked about how to donate to my video production efforts, and so I finally made a Patreon. So basically, I want to go through and add my Patreon link to all of my video descriptions. Okay, the task is pretty straightforward, I just need to go through each of my videos and add the Patreon link. But then I thought, why spend 15 or so minutes updating everything manually when I could spend 5 hours automating it? Alright, let's automate it. YouTube does have an API, so this at least stands a chance. After poking around for a while, I found these instructions on how to actually get started. There were quite a few hoops to jump through to get everything set up, but it was all free. I made a Google Cloud Developer account, a new project for that account, and enabled the YouTube API for that project. Unsurprisingly, Google is extremely serious about protecting their API and their user data. Since I'm going to be updating my YouTube video descriptions, I'm going to need access to my own private user data. That means I'm going to need to use this OAuth 2.0 authentication method. I created my client secrets file from the Cloud Developer Console and downloaded it. Next, I found the Python client library and looked at the examples for it on GitHub. It's written in Python 2.6, so we'll have to update it a little bit. It's surprisingly simple to install, just install the Python client and the authentication libraries. I used this example, myuploads.py, to figure out how to do all the authentication stuff. Of course, I'm going to have to update this for my own case. The first thing that I tried to get working was just download data for a single video. Here's kind of the flow of any program that's using the YouTube API. First, you figure out where your client secrets file is, then you create an authenticated YouTube service, and then use the service to do whatever it is you want to do. Let's take a look at how I create the service. This is basically just my own wrapper around Google's authentication process. These scopes are basically the permissions that you're asking for, either read-only or read-write. I'm only dealing with the YouTube Data API version 3, so I'm just going to fix those constants. So you just pass all that data to the Google code, and then it builds it for you. So back to downloading one video's data. The Data API lists a bunch of different resource types, and the one that I'm looking for is Videos List. The API documentation is not written specifically for Python, so you sort of just have to look at the Python examples and then try to translate it into what you want. I'm going to be using a specific video ID, so I give it an ID parameter, and then you also have to pass a part parameter to tell you kind of what do you want back from the call. It doesn't just give you all of the data it has about a video, you basically tell it what you want. Snippet contains basic information like the title and description, so we'll be using that. Back to the code, we see that we use the YouTube object and tell it that we're interested in the video API and the list method. Then we give it our video ID and tell it that we want the snippet. Execute is what goes out and actually makes the request. After executing the request, we save whatever we get back to a file. Okay, let's see what happens when we run it. The first thing that you notice is that you have to actually authorize this request manually. It gives you a link, I need to go to the link and authorize it. I have to choose the account that I'm interested in, and then again, very serious about security, Google is warning me that my app is not a verified app. Because I'm sure that this is me and not a hacker, I'll go ahead and continue. I have to agree to let my app have access to my account in order to do this. Again, I know it's me, so I go ahead and allow it. Google gives me a code that I then have to go and paste back into the terminal. Now I see this single line JSON file that has appeared in my directory. For both of our benefits, I'm going to format the JSON so I can see what I'm working with. As you can see, the response that I got back has a single item in it that's of kind YouTube video, it has the ID of the video that I requested, and the channel, that's me, and we can see the title and description are also here. You can also see information on the thumbnails and the tags of the video. Okay, that worked. This is a lot of good information. Well, that was just for one video, and I already knew the video ID. How do I download all of my videos? I'm putting this in a new file. The thing that I had to figure out in order to get all of my videos was to realize that YouTube stores your entire uploads list as a playlist. So first I'll make a request to get the ID of my playlist, and then I'll go through and download all the video snippets for that playlist. I'll use the channels list endpoint in order to find out what my uploads video playlist is. Then I'll use the playlist items list endpoint in order to find all the videos on that playlist. 
Here you can see how I query the channels list method and then extract out the uploads playlist from it. When I go to actually find the information on the playlist items though, there's a slight problem. The documentation says that the maximum number of results that you can return in one query is 50, but I have more than 50 videos. When there are more results available in addition to the data you requested, the return query will return a next page token to tell you how to get the next page of the results. You then have to loop through and make a new request over and over again until you've gotten all of your pages. I made this paginated results function in order to do this for me. Here's the code for paginated results, but I basically just copied it from one of the examples. For every page of results, I dump it to a JSON file. After running it and formatting it, I get similar JSON to the previous time, except this time there's more than one item. This time the object returned is a playlist item, so it's not the same as a video, but it does still have the title and description of each video, and it also has the actual video ID that I'm going to need to update the video. Here's the code that I came up with to update the description of a single video. I know I can get the video ID from the JSON that I just downloaded, so I'll use that and the new description as parameters. After checking that the new description contains only valid characters, I make a new request to download the data for the current video ID. I do this so that I can compare what I'm about to replace the description with with what was already there. I download a new copy of the description so that I'm absolutely sure that I'm using the most recent version of the description to compare against. I wrote this function confirm diff to show me the old, new, and the difference between the two of the two descriptions. Again, I'm doing this live on my real video description, so I don't want to mess it up. I will print everything out and then ask myself if this looks correct. Once I confirm that the diff is correct, I then update the video description and call the videos update endpoint to actually update the video description live. YouTube responds with the updated information, and as a final check, I check that the description has in fact been updated to the new description. Okay, then here's the new file that I'm using to basically call that function in a loop to change each description one after another. I load up the JSON data that I saved from a few minutes ago and then put it into a big list of videos. Because I'm expecting that I might pause and try again a few times, I'm putting this check in to make sure that I'm only going to operate on videos that don't already have the word Patreon in the description. Additionally, the first time I try this, I'm just going to do it on a single video that I've chosen ahead of time so that if the program goes rogue, I'm not going to lose all of my descriptions. Once I'm confident the program works, I'll comment this part out. Here I load up the text that has the Patreon link in it that I'm going to prepend to all of my descriptions. I make a dictionary mapping each video ID to its new description. After confirming again that I really do want to do this, I make an authenticated service and loop through all of my videos, updating the descriptions on each of them. Okay, here's the video that I'm going to test on first. Right now, you can see that there's nothing about Patreon in the description. 59 videos total, 58 of them don't have anything about Patreon in the description. Am I sure? Yes. And here we go, here's the old description. Here's the new description, has the Patreon link at the top, and here is the diff. We can see that it just added those lines at the top and then nothing else has changed. Does this look correct? Yes, let's do it. Okay, that finished instantly, so let's go check the video. All right, the video is still alive. The description now contains the new links. It appears to be correct as far as I can tell. I guess it just worked on the first try. Honestly, I wasn't totally sure that was going to happen. Okay, we tried once. Let's do it for real. Let's update all of the video descriptions. It looks like most of them went through, but it looks like on one of the last ones, I got an HTTP error 400. Oh, I scrolled over and it's telling me the metadata is invalid. So I don't see anything wrong with the description itself. It seems just like any of the others. It looks like it succeeded for all of the videos up until this one. So that's basically all of the videos. I think I'll just re-download the video description data and try again. And it failed again. Well, I guess it wouldn't be a real coding project if something totally unexplainable didn't happen, so I guess I'll still consider it a success. So, was it worth it? 
After all, this took me hours and hours to do, and updating it by hand probably would have only taken 15 or 20 minutes. Well, yes, I think this was absolutely worth it, and not just for educational purposes. I'm now able to update the video descriptions of all of my videos in an instant. If tomorrow I want to add or remove a link from the description, I can do that in no time. In the future, I'll be able to keep all my video descriptions up to date with all my latest information with basically no extra effort. So yeah, I call that a huge win even though I spent like 5 hours on it today. If you like this video enough to watch it all the way through, you should probably be subscribed, so don't forget. And if you especially like the video, please consider sharing with your friends and maybe even becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Again, thanks for watching and see you next time.